So this is going to be our first use of ice tables. And we use ice tables to calculate the equilibrium concentrations for a reaction or the Kc for a given reaction. So ice stands for initial change equilibrium. And typically in these types of problems, you are given some initial concentrations that are not at equilibrium. And then you're given at least one equilibrium value. And from that change, you can look at the changes for all of the species and then you are able to calculate Kc. So you typically start out an ice table with a row of all the concentrations that you know of. And so this is initial and they are not going to be at equilibrium. Then you use the equilibrium concentration that you are given for at least one of the species to look at the change that occurred from initial to equilibrium for that one species. And then using stoichiometry, you look at the changes of all the other species that are involved in the equilibrium. And then from that, you can find the equilibrium concentrations for all the species. Once you find the equilibrium concentrations, you plug them into the equilibrium expression and calculate Kc. So let's look at a typical example. So here I give you an equilibrium, and I tell you that um, I have an initial concentration of 5 molar H2 and 4 molar I2 and I allow the reaction to reach equilibrium. Once equilibrium is established, I tell you that the concentration of I2 is now going to be 2.0 molar. So this is going to allow us to look at a change from initial to equilibrium for I2. Once we look at that change, we are then going to be able to uh, calculate the changes for all the other species, and then we are going to be able to calculate Kc. So before we start out, I know that this reaction is going to go to the right because I have mixed some initial amounts of H2 and I2, but the initial concentration for HI is zero. So the reaction must go to the right and it must ma make some HI in order for equilibrium to be established. So with our ICE table, I put in the initial, initial values that were given. So we were told that we started out with five molar H2, 4 molar I2, and our initial concentration of HI was 0. When I look at the stoichiometry, I know that as the reaction is going to the right, it is using up H2 and I2 to make HI. But the relative stoichiometry says that for every one H2 I use up, I use up one I2, and then I make two of my HI. When I think about it in terms of X values, that means for every amount x of H2 I'm using up, I'm using up x amount of I2, and I'm making 2x of HI. Now what I need to find out is what is the actual value for x. And I get this by looking at the equilibrium concentration that was given in the problem. So I was told that at equilibrium, my concentration of I2 was 2.0 molar. So that means that the change from initial to equilibrium was negative 2.0 molar for I2. And so that means my X value is 2.0 molar. So now that I know that X is 2.0 molar, I then can say that I have lost X of my H2, or 2.0 molar, so my equilibrium concentration of H2 is 3.0 molar. Likewise, the reaction is making 2x of HI, so if I know that x is 2.0 molar, 2x is going to be 4.0 molar. So that means my equilibrium concentration of HI is 4.0 molar. So I knew that this reaction went from an initial concentration of I2 from 4 molar to 2 molar. That means that it lost 2 molar inside of here. Therefore, H2 must lose 2 molar to become 3.0 molar, and I2 must gain 4.0 molar to have an, a final concentration of 4.0 molar. So now I have all of the equilibrium concentrations. I can plug them into my equilibrium expression. So the equilibrium expression is still just products divided by reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficients like this. And I take my equilibrium concentrations and I plug them into my equilibrium expression. Once I do this, I calculate a value for 2.7, and then remember, k values are unitless. So we do not put a unit value on here. 